Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Animal Dreadnoughts. Or rather, not to Ultimate Animal Dreadnoughts, but to me reading some patch notes and news. Um, you maybe saw my community post uh, yesterday about the news that 1.1 or 1.10, I'm not quite sure how they're going to name it, uh, is coming. And I wanted to talk about the major features that were coming um, and explain a little bit of kind of what we know and what we don't know. And in the background, there there, there will be a bit of a battle, which I'll just uh, get them to actually engage each other. So the first major new feature is that shared designs are coming to the game. This is really exciting, something that... Um, you know, we, we've been, or well, I've been certainly hoping for for quite some time, and I'm really glad to see it's coming in. But there's a few details about it that I have questions about, and I just wanted to talk about what it might be, what it might not be, and kind of hopes for the future with it. So, in terms of what they said, um, they said that they wanted to introduce this for a long time. Uh, which is, as far as I know, true. Um, when the game files got uh, encrypted, as a lot of people were kind of complaining about that, um, I believe that was the start of them trying to implement this feature. But um, as they say themselves, it doesn't didn't work <laughs> because it it just broke. Um, so hopefully they've uh, fixed that. So you can now design ships in the special shared designs interface off of the main menu so sharing the designs is going to have a different designer from custom metals and campaigns so that's cool i think that's a that's a good way of of handling it and then it says these designs are then available for the ai to auto design in campaigns or as shareable ships in custom battles so you'll be able to send your ships to someone else they can then use them in a custom battle. It doesn't say whether you can import someone else. I think you can, though. Import someone else's designs uh, for use in your campaigns. But how will it work in the campaign? Well, it basically says um, that it will speed up campaign fleet generation, but they say the default option is what they call selective. So, basically, if the, the AI, AI will try to make a ship, and if it can't, it will use a player design. And then there's always, which is, you know, make the AI use player designs, presumably if it can. Uh, or just off, don't use any player designs. Now, what I have a lot of questions about it because is it possible, say, for me to make ships for all, all, all of the hulls, like designs for every hull? And have the AI use it. Will it riff off designs that players have made or imported? Um, and how does it all actually function? I'm really curious to see. And it also says the new feature allows you to share designs you make with your friends as each ship is stored in a separate file which you can copy paste in the share designs folder. So you just import them. Now that's fine, absolutely fine, but I have, again, there's questions about this. At the moment, with custom battles, ships are saved by year and class. Will it be the same? So if you go into a custom battle, say 1940, battleship, you'll find a battleship save file. Okay, is that how, how it's going to work? And the second thing is discoverability. Now, I would love to see that on the Steam Workshop. So that I, for instance, could take all the designs from the Wilbush 2 Battleship League that I did with Jokinifal, which are fairly historically accurate ships, and put them up on the Workshop, and you press subscribe, and suddenly the AI has access to historical historical ships to use. That would be very, very cool. Or is it a case of me having to do it myself <laughs> and setting up 
I don't know, a depository somewhere, or a website, or something like that, so that, you know, players can make these designs visible to others, or is it, you know, at the mo at, at base, just going to be, oh, you, you need to know someone with the game. So, there's a bit of, you know, what exactly how does that work I think that's probably the biggest feature for me and it will change the game a lot uh, and I would like to know if Steam Workshop support is in the future or not <laughs> because I don't want to go to all the effort of oh well because if I know Steam Workshop isn't a thing then I probably will try and set up some sort of ship sharing thing um, because I think it would be a really good thing for the game to have um, a really cool thing for the community to have but if Steam Workshop is coming at some point then well I don't want to waste the effort doing that if it's just going to be replaced by Steam Workshop anyway um, the next major feature is improved fire control um, this is mainly so that guns can fire out each side. Um, different secondary guns can target different things um, and things like that. So very, very useful. I hope that fixes some of the issues around fire control, such as secondary guns interfering with main guns, some of the weirdness to do with if you had a mixed battery and stuff like that. Um, I really need to see it, um, but it, it is potentially that a lot of the bug fixes, and I'll come back to that in a minute, uh, <laughs> a lot of the bug fixes to do with fire control have maybe been delayed because they knew they were reworking the system. So uh, The next one, again, I think is a, is a complete rework task force limit. So task forces now have a maximum number of ships, and I think it's a tonnage as well, uh, which is changed by tech. Yeah, basically task forces are now, you, you can't just put your entire fleet in a single task, task force and off, off they go. Um, should hopefully help with preventing doom stacks a little bit. Um, at least that's the intention. Um, Hopefully that also includes a rework of task forces in general, because, to be honest, they are not very... <laughs> They're still a little bit wonky at the best times. So, yeah, I, I'm keen to see what that actually does in terms of game you'll maybe notice in my Russian campaign, or Soviet campaign, I should say. I don't even use task forces. I haven't used them once. Because you're generally better off just keeping your ships in port. So if task forces are actually useful, and there's a feature later on that I think will make them useful, then fantastic. Um, next, uh, these are campaign-only features. Uh, although I would have said that task force limit was also a campaign feature, but there you go. Um, so <laughs> the province is on the map have been changed including one of my most frequent comments which is why does country X have province Y in date Z so they have redone that with one major exception which is Austria-Hungary in the Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought's timeline uh, still exists even after 1920 um, fairly obvious why they would do that. So it's not going to be completely historical, but close enough. Um, also says that unrest levels and economy uh, vary according to start date. So presumably if you start in, a, in the 20s or 30s, it's going to be a bit different. Government mechanics are being introduced, so no more monarchy US. Um, I basically said that there are th there are three absolute monarchies, constitutional monarchies, and democracies. Um, 
and in the last two constitution monarchies and democracies you will get elections and there's five different parties and the government will have modifiers affecting GDP growth, province income, uh, naval funds, land army power, come back to that, and unrest. So, and the flags can change. Very cool. Some Victoria 3 elements being introduced, basically. Uh, Paradox Grand Strategy style stuff. Um, the ships just sailing away from each other or something. Why are you all going away from each other? Ugh, blooming typical. Right, hopefully they'll uh, come back to each other. Oh, that's that's why I uh, forgot to um, switch on the AI control. There we go. Maybe they'll turn around. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I just just let them do whatever they wanted. Um, then uh, you know, if you get a revolution, then you'll get a change in government. Makes sense. The one that it, I think is 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 missing is. Uh, a dictatorship. I know that's very similar to a monarchy, um, uh, but possibly a. I mean, it does say you can get nationalists or communists in power, and may I think if if that happens, that they should perhaps change government type away from democracy, because at that point you're an autocracy of one one type or another. But that that's splitting hairs. Um, and with the flag changes, they do specifically mention um, having the, if you have a certain country and a certain party in charge, it will have a certain flag. And I'm dodging around that so I don't have to uh, change my YouTube <laughs> content setting is not a problem. But um, I hope the developers remember that I'm pretty sure you still can't do that in Germany. Maybe they changed that. But uh, I think in Germany they'll they'll have to have a an option to turn that off. But um, yeah, just, just <laughs> it's fine, right? Um, then new diplomacy options come in, and this is really interesting because you can now interact with other nations more. You have five things that you can do. Basically, you can improve relations. Increase tension, a.k.a. lower relations. <laughs> you can cancel an alliance, but only if you've been allied for a year and there's no war going on. You can ask for a peace treaty. So if you've been at war for a while, you can kind of indicate that you want peace. And naval invasion, which is a very spicy form of political interaction. Um... Now, most of those are pretty normal, but naval invasion apparently appears when you place a fleet of more than 100,000 tons in a sea region of an enemy major nation, which is very cool. And they have a chance to succeed. I very much hope that the game tells you what your chance is, otherwise that could get quite annoying. And naval invasions are kind of interesting because what will happen is you get enough force, 100,000 tons, in, an, uh, in a sea region, and then you go, right, naval invade, and then you get a special mission, and you must place ships inside in order to support the naval invasion. So it sounds like you will get a little circle appearing on the map telling you, right, you've got to move your, your fleet within this circle. So you're going to have to use a task force. And then it basically launches an invasion. Obviously, I guess if there are, it'd be a bit like a port strike, you know, any, any enemy ships are going to try and stop you. Um, and then you land troops which is linked to the new land conquering mechanic so when a war starts then if the enemies border each other then the militaries will fight so you might see you know land 
battles going on. You don't have direct control, remember. In Ultimate Admiral, you are the Ultimate Admiral. You are not the ultimate authority of the nation. Um, and you can affect it because uh, how well your army is doing is affected a lot by their supply. And the supply is affected by transports, so if you're sinking enemy transports, then you're going to be uh, preventing them from getting supplies and things like that. So, very, very cool. Um, interesting to see how they interconnect those systems, because there is a lot in there. Um, and, yeah, I, it will be very interesting. Now, that's all with major nations. You can also conquer small nations. So this is during peacetime. You can get a special event that triggers a mission against a small nation. So your land armies are going to go in. Or you will be asked to send a fleet to naval invade them. So for instance, if you're playing as the US, then you might get an event to go and take Hawaii. Very cool, and that gives you a naval base in the middle of the Pacific. Because in 1890, the US doesn't start with Hawaii. Um, very interesting. You Maybe you want to go and attack the Ottoman Empire and steal their stuff. Very, very interesting. Um, they also talk about uh, rebellions. So if you get a lot of unrest in majors, then you get a revolt especially in distant colonies and your fleet may be told you have to go to this place on the map um, and help basically so you'll get a, a mission to send a task force over to a certain point of the map quite interesting um, you can also ally and trade ships with the smaller nations again very cool uh, it doesn't say exactly how that works, but it says the major nation can sell warships to smaller nations on their request. Okay. When you accept a sales order, the requested ships are automatically added to the building queue. So I think you are not designing ships for the miners. What you're doing is the miner goes, hey, we would like you to build this ship for us. And you do. And then you build them in your shipyards and they give you an upfront payment to start construction and you keep profit when they're delivered. Um, so it seems like basically you get paid before and after. Um, cool. Uh, you can also stop the sale and nick them like uh, the British did um, with, well, Agincourt uh, is an example. Um, uh, but they're g it's going to piss them off. Fair enough. And the salt ships are added to the fleet of the small nation, and during war, they can aid their allies in the vicinity. Yeah, my big question about this is, do you get to design these ships, or are they designed for you? I think that'll be the, um, the big big question like are these ships way <laughs> are these ships going to be designed by the player or are they an AI design like do you have any influence over it because that would be really interesting if you if you did get to design them anyway uh, ship building has also been changed so Basically, your shipyard capacity is no longer unlimited. So at the moment, it's just you can build ships of up to however many thousand tons. But you can build as many of them as you want. Now there will actually be a, a, a limit, total limit. So I don't know. So you can only build 500,000 tons of ship per year or something like that. Or at once or whatever. So you can become bottlenecked, you can't just spam out massive super battleships all the time. Um, and when you, if you go over it, then construction rate goes down. So it's not a hard cap, it's a soft cap, um, meaning that 
you are going to want to make sure that you are under that so that you're not uh, you're not overstretching yourself and slowing down construction of important ships um, but they say you know suspend construction of the less important ships so you can more important ones get finished perfectly fine um, oil resources have now been or will be added so certain provinces I guess will have oil and which gives you a economic boost and also affects fuel dependency of fleets again I don't quite know how that is going to work if a nation does not have a direct access to oil, then ships with oil fuel are significantly more expensive to maintain and fuel takes longer to replenish. And on the flip side, if you have lots of oil, then fuel replenishment will go up and fleets will be able to operate wherever they want. So if you're playing the US and you have access to tons of oil, um, or the British, to be honest, um, and you have loads and loads and loads of oil fields that you can use, then it's going to be cheaper and more effective for you. But if you will, if you don't, then there's a significant uh, incentive to go and get some, <laughs> which is good. I like, you know, things like that, which is like, oh well, you know, say you're playing Germany, you now have a vested interest in securing your own oil supply which is exactly how real nations operate it's like well i need oil so i'm gonna go and invade this little nation over here that has oil and then other major nations are like haha no you don't um we want to keep you oilless and stuff like that so that's good i like that uh canals uh being finalized that's that's good um uh, and they give an example, the Dardanelles and the Bosphorus Freight Strait will belong to the Ottomans. So if you're not friendly with the Ottomans, um, and you're, you're at war with the Ottomans, then you can't transit the Straits. Fair enough. Uh, and it says other major nations may order a naval invasion, simulating the Gallipoli campaign in order to seize the Straits. Again, makes sense. I, I, I like that kind of um, way of giving players a reason to go to war with the, the Ottomans in this case because or to attack the Ottomans directly because well they're blocking access to the Black Sea so let's get it. Uh, that's all of the new features um, and there are some new hulls which I'll talk about in a minute but um, one of the, the I, I would say the most common comment on the community post I made yesterday on my discord on the games forums and on the steam page is bugs and balance now fire control getting a rework um hopefully will address some of them uh the improvements to the campaign i think will address some of those concerns as well task forces things like that if assuming that they work um, after a few versions of the beta. Um, the one thing that everybody's been asking for, though, and this is quite unusual, is we'd love to see a list of the bug fixes. What bugs and balance changes are you going to be making? Um, because the community has been saying for a while, pretty much the whole of 1.9, uh, 1.09, is, look, we, we, there's a lot of things that need tweaking and fixing. Um... You know, penetration uh, is is a big one for me. Uh, mines, submarines, uh, all these things. Some of the weights and stats of components seem a bit off, um, and things like that. So, hopefully, we get to see that soon. Uh, there is no detail aside from yes, we're aware there are bugs. We have been working on bugs. And I think anything to relate to fire control or task forces or how nations interact with each other was shelved because, um, of, you know, it's getting re reworked in 1.10 anyway. Um, there are also new hulls 
so the there's a new hull based on the USS Maine, uh, which is going to be called the Coastal Defence Ship from 1890 to 1898. Uh, displacement goes from 6,000 to 8.5. And, um, and then the other new hulls are basically going to be riffing off of existing things. And nearly all of them are pre-Dreadnought era ships, which personally I'm not at all interested in. I would have loved to have seen just more like cruisers, but eh, the pre-Dreadnought era does need some attention. Um, so China is getting a, a, a new ship called the Turret Ship. Um, and they're getting a bigger version of that. It's also getting the USS Main hull. Uh, so are Germany and Austria. Uh, Austria is also getting two new armoured cruiser designs. Russia and Spain are also getting that Chinese turret cruiser. Uh, China's getting something called a medium cruiser from 1896 to 1921. I'm curious what that's actually going to be. It's probably going to be a repurposed hull from somewhere else, protected cruiser design of some sort. Uh, France and Russia are getting a small torpedo cruiser, which, um, okay. Uh, Germany, France, and Russia are getting a torpedo cruiser, as are the USA, Britain, Japan, Spain, China, and Italy. I expect that to basically be the same hull, but with minor differences. Uh... USA, Russia, and Spain are getting a gunboat. I don't know what that is. I don't even know what... what the, maybe that's a in the destroyer um, class. I actually have no idea. And then there is a small semi-dreadnought coming for China, Spain, and a variant for Italy. So lots of new hulls mostly focusing on the pre-dreadnought era um, there's a few cruisers that will hang around for a bit so if that's your jam is that if that's when you like playing the game then fantastic there's lots of stuff in there for you uh, we also have some new gun models uh, so new mark 1 guns for 2 to 13 inch guns for the USA very nice mark 2 and mark 3 guns for 2 to 9 inch for the USA and new Mark 1 guns for China and Mark 2 guns for China as well. So some new gun models as well. Very nice to see the US getting some attention. Um, there will be a new Naval Academy mission although I haven't played the Naval Academy, Naval Academy for ages. That is in serious need of a rebalance. Uh, and a balance and fixes. And that's the big question. What what balances and fixes? What are you fixing? What, you, what are you balancing and how are you balancing it? Because um, for me, there are some really low, low hanging fruit in terms of fixes and balances. Um, you know, turrets rotating and getting stuck still on occasion. It's pretty annoying. Penetration being very weird. Uh, resistance being a little bit broken and therefore Turtleback being stupid. Um, thing, things of that nature. Uh, big guns as well. Anything over 16 inches is basically useless. Uh, what, how, we, how are the developers looking at that? How are we as a community going to respond? Well, <clears throat> we'll have to wait and see. In terms of a timeline, um, I would say it's always best to take uh, <laughs> announcements with a pinch of salt um, they do say they're trying to finalise it for this week uh, I'm recording this on the 14th of December so I'm guessing it's supposed to go into beta before Christmas now in terms of me personally I am not going to be hopping onto the beta straight away uh, I will do a video um, similar to this one uh, talking about the changes, maybe uh, showing off the new hull and things like that. But don't expect a campaign on 1.10 until 2023, probably when the game comes out of beta, simply because, well, two reasons. First of all, 
I have a current my current campaign, the Soviet campaign, which I am enjoying, and I don't feel it's really coming to an end yet. And the other is I am currently working on Division One of the Battleship League, which I kind of don't want to lose my ship designs and have to redo it all and all that, all this sort of thing. So I will probably stay on 109 until after Christmas and New Year when I will pick up 1.10, but I will do a little video covering some of the new hulls, some of the new features, things like that. Um, but this video is mostly going to be, hey, look, this is what's coming. A little, little guide for the various things that you can look out for um, and expect. And, you know, hopefully you're excited and you're like, oh, yes, great. But, yeah, bugs, balance. Well, you kind of need to know what that is. Like, what bug fixes and balance updates are you doing uh, to the game game labs we kind of want to know that because I can I can like that is the number one requested thing um, by far so hopefully we get some details about that very soon anyway uh, I hope you have enjoyed watching the French and Italians not snot out of each other in the background and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye for now.